Hello, this is Dr. Rupak Gandhi, Superintendent for Fargo Public Schools. I'm here today to deliver our 2023 Fargo Public Schools State of the Schools Address. This year, we've decided to deliver the State of the Schools Address differently than years past. Traditionally, we have always tied the State of the Schools Address in conjunction with our annual public focus group event, where we try to get feedback from teachers, from students, from parents, community members, and all other stakeholders to assist Fargo Public Schools in our future plans. Over the past couple of years, irregardless of whether the event has been held in person, hybrid, or online, we have noticed a significant decline in participation, not truly hitting our intended goals of maximizing community and stakeholder engagement to the best of our ability. One of the pieces of feedback that we've been given by some parents at previous public focus group events is that it's hard to commit to one event on one night centrally located uh, knowing that that's one of the major opportunities that they have to provide feedback for the district on various topics. Some parents have asked us to consider doing a more localized decentralized focus group opportunity where school communities can go to their neighborhood schools or parents can go to the schools of their children and be able to participate in fo focus groups accordingly. To try to engage in more stakeholder input and give parents more of an opportunity to be part of having their voice heard in our decision making moving forward, we are committing to exploring that option. This fall, our annual public focus group will be held at each individual school building at a time chosen by that school administration. All of the school districts in Fargo Public Schools will cover the same topics and we will make sure that we are providing all stakeholders an opportunity to provide feedback on our educational process. The State of the Schools Address is being delivered virtually. This will allow parents and community members to view the event multiple times, go back if there's any information that they want to repeat, and allow us to publicly post it so it can be accessible anytime by anyone as they need. So why don't we just jump into it? The 2022-2023 school year has kicked off to a great year in Fargo Public Schools. We are proud of many of the accomplishments of our students and staff already, and we're just approaching the halfway mark as we end the first semester. We look forward to finishing this school year strong, but also celebrating many of the successes that we've already come to appreciate here in Fargo Public Schools this year. First and foremost, we recently redesigned our strategic plan. Our strategic plan was last developed in 2014 and then updated again in 2018. We have since updated our strategic plan using the feedback collected from previous State of the Schools events for multiple different stakeholder groups and making sure that we've had an opportunity for students and staff to be able to provide feedback along with other community members about the future of Fargo Public Schools. This past summer, our Board of Education worked diligently at one of their work sessions to ensure that they're solidifying not only the strategic targets that we have as an organization, but how they're going to commit to participating and monitoring our performance as a system on an annual basis to ensure that we are making the progress towards the goals and the results that we've identified in our strategic plan. We've also used our strategic plan as an avenue to provide community education around how we measure performance in our system. Over the last couple of years, it has become no secret that public education has become much of the spotlight of attention, whether it's in the media, whether it's with legislators, or with various stakeholder groups. While we appreciate the increased engagement of different in all stakeholders on public education and how schools perform and provide the much needed service to educate our children, it's also important that we are able to delineate between how data is used, both by an individual, but also by a practitioner. Our educators are trained to work in looking at data to make sure that our students are meeting their academic needs. Academic needs in Fargo Public Schools means teaching the whole child. We understand that social emotional learning, cultural pedagogy, making sure are just as important factors as it is to have content area instruction. Additionally, we remain committed to providing our students with a wide variety of experience, whether it be in the arts or other extra and co-curricular activities, to make sure that students have the breadth and depth of a wide variety of choices in Fargo Public Schools to be able to teach and meet 
their needs as a whole child. Our strategic plan has used a wide variety of factors and a framework to define how we're going to do our work, but most importantly, it also provides some common language that we'll be using as an organization moving forward. This common language delineates between different data points that help us identify what's data used by a practitioner or an educator for their purpose of improving their own craft or their practice or meeting the needs of their students, and then what is data used to evaluate both individuals as educators, systems such as schools and districts, or our performance overall as one Fargo Public Schools entity. Being able to delineate between those different factors is very important. As we all know, data can be used for a wide variety of purposes, but the communication of data has to be critically important for it to meet its intended purpose. Along with our strategic plan, we are also going to be updating our long-range financial plan in Fargo Public Schools. We have a lot of different buildings with a lot of varying needs, but we also have a lot of growth in Fargo Public Schools. As we've discussed in previous years, Fargo, Fargo is a very linear city and our district continues to grow on the south side. While we plan to meet the needs of our south side growth that continues on an eating basis, we also have to take a look at what do our existing facility needs over time. We, as a district and as a board, have looked at a wide variety of options. We continue to explore decommissioning the Agassiz Building, which would relocate Dakota High School and our ed adult education program. We will be exploring looking at Horace Mann and Roosevelt to update those building needs. And in doing so, do we have an opportunity to provide one K-5 building instead of having a split campus? We will continue to explore more opportunities throughout our geographic district to provide early childhood special education services for our most youngest and vulnerable learners. And then we continue to explore how we need to purchase new land or plan for new buildings to capture south side growth and make sure that we're meeting the demands. Several years ago, I had a task force that involved representatives from all of our community neighborhoods in Fargo Public Schools one of the guiding principles that was adopted and then later adopted by the Board of Education was to ensure that we have a consistent feeder pattern between middle schools and high schools. In order to do that, we will have to move and shift towards a four comprehensive middle school and four comprehensive high school model in Fargo Public Schools to be able to plan for the South Side growth. While Discovery currently feeds into Davies High School, we know that both buildings are already at capacity and then we are going to continue to grow on the south side. We expect the growth that we're seeing now in South Fargo to exponentially increase once the diversion is completed and community members are able to purchase more affordable homes that have already been flood insured or flood protected. To plan for that, we really need to make sure that we have two middle schools and two high schools on the south side of town that allow us to capture the most amount of individuals in those each school districts or each school's in catchment area and be the best fiduciaries of taxpayer dollars that we can. These are just a few of the capital needs that Fargo Public Schools is going to continue to explore to meet the demands of our growing city and district as we move forward. Another major conversation for Fargo Public Schools this year and as we move forward is focused around how we deliver reading instruction to our youngest learners, specifically those in kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. As an educator, I've had to go through a major shift in how I was taught to teach reading as an elementary teacher over the last couple of years. Our state has adopted legislation to focus more on teaching phonetic awareness to students based on increased information, research, and evidence-based practices that have proven to be more successful on how reading instruction should be taught and delivered. This is a change compared to many traditional practices how educators have been taught to teach reading over the last several years. This will require a shift in curriculum. This will require suspending or eliminating current practices and discontinuing some own internal notions of how children learn to read. The best way I can explain the Fargo Public Schools shift in how we will be providing reading instruction will be to give myself as an example when I first became a teacher. When I was first trained 
on how to teach students to read, I was given a wide variety of options to use as instructional strategies. Some of those strategies focused on phonemic awareness to make sure that students were able to recognize the relationship between sounds and their visual representation in a letter to be able to string those things together to read fluently a word and then comprehend its meaning. Other strategies focus solely on reading comprehension. Some of those actually focused on making sure that students can recognize a word because they've been associated with that word in other parts of their environment or they have a recognition to the letter T-H-E, for example, means the, and then be able to say, okay, that's what the looks like and comprehend reading accordingly. The last couple of years, there's been a significant movement in, based on research and evidence-based practices that say that we are doing a disservice to students when we only focus on word association and word recognition for them to comprehend reading. Because by substituting comprehension for phonetic fluency, we are never mastering the skill that a student needs to be able to string words together, which can then down the road penalize them for when they expose or are in a reading environment or exposed to words that they have never been exposed to before. It is fundamentally important to both understand that phonics and comprehension are both isolated components to reading. They're both critically important. However, one cannot substitute the other, and phonetic instruction is critically important as we move forward. Therefore, Fargo Public Schools have to shift their philosophy for many teachers or how we've been taught or trained to teach reading in the past based on the information that we have at the time. This will require a shift in curriculum. This will require stopping some of our intervention practices and changing our methodology of how we communicate reading, how we assess reading instruction, and how we deliver content to students moving forward so we can prepare our students to become the most skilled readers regardless of where what environment they'll be in down the road and make sure that we're equitably providing all of our scholars the opportunity to succeed academically. 2023 marks the start of another legislative session in Fargo Public Schools. Fargo Public Schools remains committed to fighting for public education and ensuring that at the Capitol, we are advocating to meet the needs of all of our students in every one of our buildings. In Fargo Public Schools, our mission is to educate and empower all students to succeed, and we will continue to lobby and advocate with our state and local legislators to ensure that we can fulfill that mission to the best of our ability. Our legislative priorities, as determined by the Board of Education's Governmental Affairs Committee, continue to remain advocating for funding to meet the needs of all learners in Fargo Public Schools so we can ensure that we are, have all the resources and be able to compensate all of our tremendous staff for the hard work that they do appropriately and adequately so we can continue providing education at the highest level. Secondly, we also want to continue focusing on positive behavioral health and support. We know that mental and behavioral health is critically important. We also know that our students, our community members, deserve the appropriate mental and behavioral health services from the right licensed individuals. As educators, we find tremendous joy in being able to serve our students both academically and in the realm of social emotional learning to the best of our ability and see them succeed and see them flourish. However, it's also excruciatingly painful to be able to spend the time that we do with students and not be able to provide them the resources or services they need because they may be beyond our locus of control. As school districts in North Dakota, we don't have the ability to bill insurance companies to the same level as mental and behavioral health service providers. We also don't have the resources, education, or expertise as those individuals that come from licensed professional backgrounds dedicated to being able to treat the health needs of some of our students. Yet, school districts continue to face the burden of taking on mental and behavioral health challenges on a day-to-day -day basis. We are happy to do so as long as we have the right resources, people, and training to be able to provide those services. As a school district, we are going to continue to advocate for mental and behavioral health, supports within our community and within our schools, and to make sure that our students have the right to the right provider always to be able to meet their needs so we can focus on their academic instruction 
and provide the best environment for to support them as a whole child. Lastly, each legislative session also accompanies a negotiation session between our Board of Education and the Fargo Education Association. I wish both parties the best of luck as I know that negotiations can be tough just because of the structure in which they are conducted. However, we have two great organizations committed to supporting our staff, supporting our students in Fargo Public Schools, and ensuring that we can create the best working condition for all of our environment. As I conclude this State of the Schools for 2023 in January, I want to recognize our school board for School Board Appreciation Month. The Fargo Board of Education works tirelessly and continues to dedicate their time, energy, and resources to advocate for all students in our school district and represent their community. Thank you for the work that you do. Parents, students, staff, and community members. We're only halfway through the 2022-2023 school year, and it's been a tremendous ride so far. Thank you for the great half year we've had in Fargo Public Schools. I look forward to finishing strong and being able to report even more accomplishments a year from now as we look back at the 2022-2023 school year. Thank you.